two of the questions that we, we said we'd answer are one, what current projects offer the most promise? And two, how does the government and the private sector support fledgling tech companies? And uh, for those as well as other insights, let's open the floor to Andy. Andy. Thank you very much. Um, again, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for, and the organizers for inviting me to come and also give input to this very, very important topic. And the, the way in which I will structure my, my input is just to give context by talking a little bit about the past, the present, and the future. I think, you know, when you look at what is happening today, if you juxtapose it with what happened, what the way things were before, you will appreciate, you know, some of the things that are taking place today. You know, in, in the 1990s, you know, early between 90 and 94, I mean, the organization that had a lot of global debate around the development of communications was the ITU, which is the International Telecommunications Union. And there was a cliche at the time, I mean, which was used in most slides that people presented, that there are more telephones in Manhattan than in the rest of the African continent. Think about how small Manhattan is and compare it with Africa, really. And the penetration of fixed telephony in Africa in the early 90s was below 1%. At the time, I mean, if you, you know, you sort of uh, look back, I mean, at a population that is growing at just under 3, between around 25 to 3%. I mean, we were probably sitting at just over 700 million people then, and you had less than 1% penetration in fixed telephony because hardly mobile communications was developed at the time, not only in Africa, but in the rest of the, in the, rest of the world. When the process of licensing you know, started to take place both in Europe and other parts of the world, Africa did follow, you know, that almost somewhere uh, between 1994 to probably the early 2000s, so the last part of the 20th century. To, to sort of fast track that, I mean, in 54 countries, you have an average of about three mobile operators to four today and an average of about uh, between seven and eight internet service providers. That's generally what you have. They range by size, of course, number one and number two, almost co controlling more than 60 to 70 percent of the market, and then the rest basically, you know, enjoying the crumbs I mean, at, the, at the bottom of the market. So that's generally what you have. And th there is clearly, I mean, those people who do uh, study and research economics, that there's a relationship, there's a correlation between GDP growth and broadband. I mean, this has been proven many times. Where we sit today with that history, where we sit today, we are sitting at over 800 million mobile phones that are in hands of people. Just think about, you know, this just 30 years ago, what we had and compared to what we are having today. There has been a phenomenal growth in Africa, in particular in the mobile communications. What I think John talked about, that undersea infrastructure, both on the Atlantic side and on the Indian side, is there to enhance this mobile communications that we have seen in the last 25 years. I mean, which almost has put in a phone to almost everybody in the African continent. Our projections are that in the next five years, we will reach a billion of these mobile devices in people's hands. 
the, the, just from an investment point of view, the, the last five years alone has seen $67 billion being invested in the ICT or telecommunications and IT infrastructure. And this number is going to double in the next five years. So there is huge opportunity. I mean, there is growth that we see in the African continent. I mean, from where we come from, I mean, clearly the last 20 years has seen a fundamental shift in the way in which both those who invest and those who are users of technology, how they view Africa 